Hey, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello and welcome. This is Kenya of 40 Entrepreneur Drive. I just finished a live stream um, covering my update, my weekly update for my resolutions, challenges, and goals for 2020. Since uh, today is Valentine's Day, I also did a little something extra for Valentine's Day talking about, you know, the history of it and whether or not people celebrate it. And of course, that led into dating having a significant other, and celibacy. I talked a lot about celibacy and why I am celibate in that video. However, there was, um, there was some, let's see, there we go. There were two websites that I wanted to actually use as a reference uh, while I was doing the live stream, and I just finished the live stream, and I realized that I did not cover those two topics. And so I'm going to make this here a uh, short video as a supplementary video. For those of you who may not be up to watching that two-hour live stream, actually, you know, my, my resolutions and goals and challenges update is the first portion of my video, as it usually is on Fridays. I do that update every Friday. If you want to skip ahead, I think somewhere around the 50-minute mark, I start talking about Valentine's Day and somewhere around the hour and 20 or maybe 30 minute mark, I actually start talking about celibacy. So if you want to jump on to that uh, replay and either watch the whole thing, which would be awesome for me, thanks for the support, or if you want to skip ahead and get to the juicy bits, then you can do that. But I did want to come on here and give this supplementary, uh, I probably need to turn my light back on. There we go. Now you can see me. I'm sorry about that. I was getting ready to shut everything down. Okay, so if you guys would like to jump over to uh, the live stream for the replay and, you know, watch my updates and also hear me talk about Valentine's Day, uh, whether or not people should celebrate it or why I don't celebrate it, and uh, also celibacy, then you can watch the replay. But here is some supplementary information that I want to talk to, talk about. This first one is coming from The Guardian, theguardian.com, and it's uh, the name of this particular article is called The Power of Celibacy. The Power of Celibacy. Giving up sex was a massive relief. <laughs> the plethora of dating apps has bolstered society's obsession with sex, but many people find that a period of abstinence makes them happier and healthier. This article is written by Lizzie Cernick. And like I said, it's on theguardian.com. And I wanted, I have my own personal reasons why I am practicing celibacy, but I did also want um, a little bit of uh, non-biased opinion on it as well. In a world where you can get a sexual partner faster than a pizza delivery, it has never been easier to play the field. Yet, despite all the swiping right, a surprising number of people are not having sex at all. Not for religious reasons, or because they can't get a date, because they find that celibacy makes them happier. Some have never had much interest in sex, while others are taking a break to address personal problems, recover from a bad dating experience, or change the way they approach relationships. Catherine Gray, the author of The Unexpected Joy of Being Single, gave up sex for a year in 2014. Between the ages of 16 and 34, I hadn't spent more than a few months single. She says, I felt incomplete without a plus one and constantly hunted approval. I reached a rock bottom after being disproportionately crushed by the failure of a six-month relationship, so I decided to give up sex and dating for an entire year. Although deleting her dating apps felt like giving up a drug, celibacy turned out to be a huge relief. Instead of doing what my boyfriend wanted to, I discovered what I liked, Develop developing a love for yoga, photography, and traveling. I dressed differently and no longer cared about attracting men. I started to see myself as a person. Rather than a girlfriend or a sexual plaything, the period of celibacy changed how she approached dating. She is now in a healthy relationship. I realized that I had an anxious attachment style and that if I started dating again, I would need to change 
who and how I date. If I feel insecure in the early stages of a relationship, I know it's because I'm dating someone who's emotionally unavailable. So I back away rather than persist. Good for you. I think I've been that type of person. If I feel like I'm not receiving you know, feedback, I try and try harder. Sometimes you're not supposed to keep trying like that. The comedian Eleanor Conway used to tell people that her three vices were drink, drugs, and men. I've always had an addiction. I've always had an addictive personality, she says. In 2014, she gave up the first two, vi two vices and my alcoholic behavior transferred to Tinder. It's so easy for a straight woman to date and find casual sex. It's really fun if you're in a, if you're emotionally in the right place. It's also great material if you're a comedian. It inspired her show, You May Recognize Me from Tinder. Over time, however, the admin of looking for matches became too much. The dates became a drag and any sex I had as a result was rubbish. The more sober I got, the more difficult it was to engage in casual dating. It was like my superpower stopped working. In 2018, she tried celibacy for, two, for 10 months. Surprisingly, it was a massive relief. I stopped seeing men as sex objects and females as competition. Conway found her platonic relationships with men and women improved and she was able to focus on her career. She's open to a sexual relationship now, but she knows it will happen only if she has a true connection with a person. Quick side note and commentary. In my place of work, it can be difficult talking to people and I never would have assumed or related it to the fact that Maybe the women that I'm trying to talk to find me as competition or maybe the men that I talk to think I'm trying to talk to them because my mind isn't there. I'm not in a dating realm. I'm not in a, you know, trying to find somebody to have sex with realm. I'm not in that thought process, but maybe they are. And so their view of me is skewed. Even when I, whether I'm, you know, speaking to a person that's by themselves or they happen to be together, does she think I'm trying to get with him? Does he think I'm trying to get with him? Does he think I'm trying to get with her? I mean, it's like I, I, I'm coming with neutral intentions, but it's it's interesting that they put that there that, you know, sometimes we as women can be our own worst enemies. We can be really catty with each other. And I think it's because of this resource that we're all going after, this man, this person, this um, sex. Self-imposed celibacy seems more common among women, but men too can be damaged by casual encounters. Tom gave up sex 18 months ago after he came out of an abusive relationship and joined Alcoholics Anonymous to address addiction. I was promiscuous when I was drinking, he says, but I chose to become celibate to support my recovery. He soon realized he had been using casual sex to cover up his loneliness. <sighs> Going celibate has given him the opportunity to address these emotions and improve the other relationships in his life. I go mountain biking, I help out at AA, and I spend time with friends. I've got more time for my family, and it's made those bonds stronger. Although he admits he sometimes misses sex, he believes it's not worth jeopardizing his newfound happiness. I will only have sex again if I know the relationship is right for me. I recently dated someone for several months and we never slept together. It was nice to see. It was nice that we realized it wasn't right before complicating things with sex. Sex complicates things. It really does. Many people find that a short period of celibacy is enough, but others make it a way of life. Shirley Yanez gave up sex in 2005 after serious health problems led to a hysterectomy. She also experienced financial difficulties, which kicked off a period of self-reflection and a career change. I wasn't able to have sex for a year after my operation, but I came to realize that I would rather focus on my energy uh, elsewhere in life, she says. The best part about being celibate is there's no distractions. I can focus my uh, full, fully on my passion, my purpose, and my work. In the past 15 years, she set up a business support British manufacturing. She also offers a life coaching service for homeless and young people. Good for her. I teach young people about the positive mental health benefits of celibacy. And there are, there really are. Uh, I never tell them what to do, but I talk to them about the importance of making their own decisions rather than being influenced by media or peer pressure. Yanez believes that celibacy among young people is on the rise, especially among girls. I think young women feel more empowered than ever to reject 
the sexual roles they feel pushed into in the past. Self-esteem is improving and they seem to feel more able to use their own voice. They're fighting back at school, in the workplace, and also on the dating scene. Yanez is not closed off to a sexual relationship in the future, but it's not a priority. Even though I never seek sex or relationship, my lifestyle actually seems to make men more interested in me as they see it as a challenge. She admits she's lucky that she feels comfortable with her decision. Uh, there's a little bit more in this article, but I'm going to actually move over to another article real quick. This one is from entrepreneur.com. You know, that's one of my favorite uh, articles, uh, websites I'd like to share with you guys. Entrepreneur.com. This is written by Mako, Mako Patton who is a guest writer for entrepreneur.com. And this one is called, Is Sex Killing Your Success? I'll leave the link to both of these articles in the description. In the book, Think and Grow Rich, author Napoleon Hill, I've got that book, states, sex desire is the most powerful of human desires. So strong and impelling is the desire for sexual contact that men freely run the risk of life and reputation to indulge it. Would you not agree? But Hill goes on to pontificate. The transmutation of sex energy calls for the exercise of willpower. If it is not transmuted into some other creative effort, it will find a less worthy outlet. In other words, your burning desire to have sex, that sexual energy, needs to be diverted into something creative. I agree, I agree, I agree. In essence, you must delay physical gratification, and use that desire to create your masterpiece. You must learn to transform energy. How can you do this? By simply shifting your thoughts. The mind is a creature of habit. It thrives upon the dominating thoughts you feed it. You must control your mind. Think of something yellow. Now, think of something blue. You just controlled your mind. That type of control comes from a persistence of habit. When negative emotions such as fear and procrastination start to creep in, use your mind to transform it into a positive, constructive emotion. Pos remember, positive and negative emotions cannot occupy the mind at the same time. In quantum physics, to bring something into the physical world requires focusing not only what you see, but what you want to see. Einstein said matter is a form out of energy. The very substance of what we see and feel came from someone's thoughts or energy. Ergo, not only do our thoughts impact matter, our thoughts are vibrational energy that manifest in what we see in our lives. If you think of scarcity and lack, that is what will show up in your life because your thoughts are focused on it. Whatever we focus on expands and every experience we feel with our senses only comes after decisions we've made to see, experience, and feel it, physicists say. So what we choose to focus on really does matter. In the book, The Weight which centers on celibacy before marriage, husband and wife team Devin Franklin and Megan Good comment that mastering delayed gratification has an impact on every area of life from finances to family relationships. I'm going to skip down a little bit. There's a little bit more in this article. And uh, actually, I'm going to hit the highlights and I'm going to let you guys read the rest on your own. I will leave the link to this both of these articles in the description delayed gratification it's the principle neglecting yourself creates a specific future time to stretch yourself the growth imperative commit yes i know there's a cat on me shoot okay commit yeah <laughs> in the book, The War of Art, this is the last part of the article, Pressfield says, the moment one de definitely commits oneself, then providence comes. All sorts of things occur to help one that would not otherwise have occurred. This comes from the decision one makes. When we make a start and commit in the face of our fears, something wonderful happens. When we make a beginning, we get out of our own way and allow the universe to come in and do its job. The magic of doing when we start, we are simply taking direction, not doing the work. Um, let's see. I feel like I've, I feel like I went to a whole different article. Um, in either case, uh, 
One of the reasons I talked about, I talked about many reasons in my live stream, but in a nutshell, one, just one of the reasons that I do practice celibacy is that being in a relationship does take time. It does take commitment. You do have to invest yourself, your body, your emotions, your thoughts, your mental energy. And right now, just like the article said, I'm using all of my mental energy to achieve my goals. My goal is to leave my job. Been in a factory 20 years. I'm over it. It is provided for me. It has given me many uh, opportunities, financial mostly, but that's, that's about it. I'm ready for something else in my life. And I don't want to just talk about it. I want to be about it. And I'm focused, 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 focused on making it happen. Therefore, that is one of the reasons why I am celibate. Um, to the people who say that that's not healthy, show me the show me the science behind celibacy not being healthy, physically or emotionally or uh, mentally or reproductively. I think it's healthy in a lot of ways. It's something that I um, that I do intentionally, and it is a choice that I'm very happy with. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. If you do get a chance. Uh, watch the replay as much as you can uh, for my RCG update, which is my resolutions, challenges, and goals update for 2020. Um, and let me know, let me know, have you ever had a period of celibacy? And if so, how did it help you? If it helped you, let me know. If you feel like it didn't help you, um, let me know. But I am happily cel celibate. Um Having sex takes energy, not just physical, but mental and emotional energy. I'm using all of that right now to achieve my goals, and I'm very happy with my choice. So, yes, this isn't actually the video that I wanted to make on celibacy, but Valentine's Day kind of led me to um, come here, and so here I am. My name is Kenya, and I've been celibate for six years, and I'm loving it. When God brings me my husband, if, if that's in God's plans, then those... Uh, that will change. But until then, I'm happily celibate by choice and I'm focusing all my mind, body, energy, and emotion into my goal to be an entrepreneur. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow me on social media.